I want to start off with a bit of news here, uh, and that is that we had Republican Tom Tillis write an op-ed piece saying about this declaration of a national emergency and building a wall, in part, quote, as a U.S. senator, I cannot justify providing the executive with more ways to bypass Congress. As a conservative, I cannot endorse a precedent that I know future left-wing presidents will exploit to advance radical policies that will erode economic and individual freedoms. Now, this is a Republican saying this about his president. Are we starting to see some splintering? of the Republicans up on the Hill, at least among the senators. Now, I, I don't think this is splintering so much. This is Tom Tillis, who was Speaker of the House in North Carolina, has been an outstanding senator, saying our principles are that the United States government is based on separation of powers. Barack Obama repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly made himself into an imperial president by usurping congressional authority, by doing things by executive action never been done before. And I think Tom Tillis has said, we, he is saying, we better be careful that we don't make it easier for the next left-wing Democrat president to usurp all the authority of the government and make this like we have a king. Uh, Barack Obama certainly did a lot of that in a lot of different areas, David. Well, and it's not just a, a border wall down in the South. We also have the declaration, of perhaps, of a national security crisis under Section 232, where the president is considering imposing some tariffs. You have senators, including Ch Chuck Grassley, I talked with just this morning, who are pretty upset about that, saying maybe we should change the law and take some power back from the president. Quite apart from Republicans and Democrats, are we seeing the potential shift of power on Pennsylvania Avenue back toward Capitol Hill? Well, I think this. Uh, I am someone who believes we have to have strong borders. I don't believe in open borders. I think that border security is uh, uh, one of the first indicia of nationhood. And I was in the White House in 1986 as political director for President Reagan when we passed simpson Mazzoli, the big Immigration Reform Act. And Senator Simpson says to this day, the first thing we promised the American people would we secure the borders. And we didn't. And so the American people got a right to be mad. So I'm not against what Trump's trying to do. I'm worried, as Tom Tillis is, about the way he's going about it. I think there's got to be a better way to go about it without, again, continuing the Obama imperial presidency. Well, well uh, Governor, what does it say about our institutions? And I must say specifically in Washington. I'm not saying this is necessarily happening at the states, like your home state of Mississippi. What does it say about our institutions that they can't get together on something that, as you point out, is so important as our borders? I mean, the president did go and ask for something. They gave him something. It wasn't what he wanted. Uh, but why can't we get two branches of Congress to agree on this very important issue? Well, first of all, the country is very divided. There is an enormous amount of polarization. But usually when we're polarized, we're, you know, v very far apart. Today, actually, the two parties are pretty equal. The Republicans have the, the presidency, but the president was elected without a majority of the popular vote. Republicans have the Senate. Democrats have the House. State governments are more Republican than Democrat, but much more competitive than before. So we've got, we've got parity at the same time that we have polarity. And that is very unusual in American history. Usually when we have parity, we're bunched up in the middle. Today there's not a middle. Uh, so this is a real thing. Part of it has to do with a lot of congressional districts are not going to be won by the other party, that they are heavily Democrat or heavily Republican. And if you're a Republican congressman from North Carolina, you ain't going to let anybody get to the right of you. If you're a Democrat congressman from California, you're not going to let anybody get to the left of you because you're worried about losing the primary. You're not worried about losing the general election. This adds to it. And the final thing, to be honest, the members, when I came to start doing this 50 years ago, the members all lived here. They brought their families here. They knew each other. They spent time together, Republicans and Democrats, not just within the same party. Today, so many members come up here on Monday or Tuesday and go back on Thursday or Friday. Their families don't live here. So there's a whole lot less comity and, and, and collegiality. And, Anybody that works with people, no matter what business, doesn't have to be politics, it's easier to get to an agreement or an understanding with people you know and like, you know their families, 
then you, you'll try harder and be more successful in working it out. We just don't see that right now. But so, I think it will come back because I think the American people will demand it. Well, and that's my question. As we look at this increasing polarity, to use your word, going into the 2020 election, as a Republican, as a devoted Republican, are you more worried about a moderate from the Democrats or more somebody out in the extreme? Are you more worried about an Amy Klobuchar, who might be something more of a moderate? Or are you more worried about an Elizabeth Warren or a Bernie Sanders? I'm worried they're not going to nominate a left winger, if that's what if that's the question you're so asking. So you're more worried about a moderate. Well, of course. I mean, I remember Bill Clinton very well. Uh, a new kind of Democrat, he said. He ran right up the middle. He tried, frankly, after the Republicans took over Congress for the last six years, he tried to govern a lot from the middle. We did a balanced budget for the first time in a generation. We did welfare reform. President Obama campaigned as a moderate. He campaigned much, much more to the center than he governed. He governed pretty far left, and the further you got in his, t t his terms, he, it got further and further left. And as I say, he did through executive action things that presidents had never attempted to do for executive action. So the Democrats, as they move, this, the lurch to the left has been going on for several years. And let's see who who all runs. It looks like it'd be a very large crowd like it was for us in 16. And uh, right now, the center of the Democratic Party seems to be farther left than ever in my uh, recollection. Well, for our side, frankly, David, it's not so much that we've moved to the right, but we've got a whole lot of people who are purists. You know, they're, I think of the purity caucus but in the two-party system, purity is the enemy of victory yeah. well, uh, well, in let, our country. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about maybe somebody who might not be a purist. John Kasich, uh, just gone out as governor of Ohio. A lot of people would think he's more of a centrist, much more of a pragmatist, did a good job with the budget up there. Is there any room in your party? Is there a lane in the Republican Party for somebody like a John Kasich, somebody who's more from that background rather than a purist? You know, when I was party chairman, I was very close to Kasich. Kasich deserves as much credit as, as even Newt Gingrich for the first balanced budget in the generation that I mentioned a little bit ago. Uh, our party needs to be, and it is, a big party. Uh, twice in my lifetime, the Republican candidate for president has gotten 60 percent of the vote for president. We need to run our party so not that we'll expect 60% of Americans to be Republicans. We ought to run our party where 60% of Americans would think about voting for the Republican candidate. Where it's the Republican candidate for president, the Republican candidate for state legislature or governor or senator. Uh, it's a big party because it's a big country. And I used to talk about we're the party of the open door. You don't have to agree with Haley Barber on everything to be a good Republican. If you did, we'd have a pretty dying small party. <laughs> so so uh, let's talk about what comes after Donald Trump with respect to the Republican Party. I mean, at this point, he's got an awful lot of support from within the Republican Party. I think it's fair to say. But, but at some point, uh, there will be somebody who comes afterwards. Are, are there any so-called people who would appeal to the purists, as you call them, but still be somewhat more pragmatic? Let me name a name. Nikki Haley. Her name comes up a fair amount. A fellow Southerner, not quite as far south as Mississippi, but still Southerner. Is there, are there, is there room for somebody like that who might appeal to the purists but also be pragmatic? Well, look, she, she did a great job at the U.N., one real respect across the board. Uh, I don't know if she wants to run for president. If she does, I don't know if she's thinking about 2024. And look, it's hard to figure out what's going to happen in the November elections this year, much less to be pretending that you can predict what's going to happen in six years. But I think she is somebody who will have a following, who will be well regarded in our party. And she's a conservative, but she's not you know, just some hard liner about everything. And, and I think she is a good example of where our party is going to be going. You know, she's, her parents are from India. Obviously, she's a, she's a female, really outstanding governor. And, and excuse my saying so, but I think a lot of the real leaders in our party over my time have been governors. You know, uh, I used to tell Trent Lott, who was the Senate Majority Leader and was my friend, is my friend from Mississippi, the difference between governors and senators is senators talk about doing things, governors do things. <laughs> uh, 
And uh, so Nikki, I think, but there are right. others. Right. And, the, you know, assuming Trump runs for re-election, right. I, you know, I don't have any inside information. Right. We're talking about something that's way down the road. Yeah. Or we're talking about somebody who wants to challenge him for the nomination. Right. And uh, you're right. His numbers among Republicans are quite high. Yeah. Even though there are a lot of Republicans, there are some things about him he doesn't like. Right. Uh, things about Trump that those Republicans don't like. Right. But that's right. another story. 